I've seen a surprisingly large number of people who have been living their life with lupus only to find out years later that they actually have mixed connective tissue disorder or MCTD. It can come as quite a shock as you can imagine and can leave them feeling like they are back at square one, which they aren't really, but I'll get into that more later. So I'm not going to give you a breakdown of everything MCTD is because honestly, if you've never heard of it, you may not even think this applies to you. What I'm going to discuss instead is how it relates to lupus. We'll talk about how these two conditions overlap, what are the key differences you can look out for, and why it all matters. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Let's start with why many find themselves in this situation in the first place. If you have been told you have lupus, but then find out you have MCTD, was it because your doctor missed something? Well, not necessarily, because lupus and MCTD have a lot of similarities. They are in the same family for sure, but they are definitely not the same. Both conditions are systemic autoimmune disorders that lead to inflammation that causes many of the symptoms that we see and feel. And many of the symptoms are the same. Things like fatigue, brain fog, rashes, hair loss, and joint and body pain are all seen in both lupus and MCTD. So someone can walk into a doctor's office, have all of these symptoms, and have a positive ANA, and it's pretty clear why someone would be given a diagnosis of lupus. And MCT also will have a positive ANA, by the way. So none of these things will differentiate between the two. Now, when rheumatologists are evaluating anyone with an autoimmune condition, they are, or they should be, constantly searching for clues that either challenge their diagnosis or point them in a new direction. Autoimmunity is not a fixed thing, and we need to always be on the lookout for new data. So although it's true that lupus and MCTD share many of the same symptoms, and both will have a positive ANA, there are some clues that can tip off your doctor that they need to peel back a few more layers. And if you know what those clues are too, you can gently bring them to your doctor's attention so they don't get overlooked. The first clue that lupus may actually be MCTD is the presence of Raynaud's. I've talked a lot about Raynaud's in other videos, so I won't hammer it again here, but in short, we notice when the tiny blood vessels in our fingers, our toes, or really anywhere else, overly constrict as a reaction to cold or stress. This will then lead to fingers or toes to change color and become numb as its blood flow is now constricted. Raynaud's is pretty common and can happen by itself or alongside an autoimmune condition, including lupus. Yes, people with lupus can have Raynaud's and it doesn't automatically mean that they have MCTD. However, Raynaud's is also associated with scleroderma and scleroderma is a feature of MCTD. You see, MCTD is an overlap condition and the conditions that are overlapped are lupus, scleroderma, and myositis. So any feature of scleroderma in someone with lupus should be a clue that we need to look closer. And by the way, if you are realizing that you have symptoms or problems that haven't been addressed, and you want to get organized so you can discuss them with your doctor, you can download the Appointment Home Run Handbook. It's a free guide I put together that walks you through everything you need to think about when you have or you may have an autoimmune condition. You can then have the best appointment ever and your doctor will have the information they need to get you answers faster. There's a special edition that's for lupus and it's free. The link is in the description box. Another clue that points towards MCTD in someone with lupus is the presence of muscle inflammation. Now, I know what you're thinking. How in the world am I supposed to know if I have muscle inflammation? And that's a fair question, because honestly, we have to put together a lot of data, including blood tests, your symptoms, and maybe even an MRI and muscle biopsy to know for sure if there's actual muscle inflammation. But two of those things, the blood test and your symptoms, are things you can keep an eye on. The symptoms of muscle inflammation is going to be largely muscle weakness. 
Now, I'm not talking about the general weakness that we can feel when we have autoimmunity. That kind of weakness is usually malaise, like not wanting to get out of bed or not having any energy. People will feel very weak in their bodies, but not necessarily have specific muscles that are weak. The muscle weakness that we see in myositis or muscle inflammation is literally, I can't lift my arms to brush my hair, I can't lift my legs to go up this step, I can't get out of this chair without hoisting myself up. When our muscles are inflamed, they leak out certain enzymes that we can see in our blood tests. One of them is the creatinine kinase, or CK. This can be an indication of muscle inflammation, but this isn't one of our usual lab tests. So if you or your doc aren't thinking about your muscles, they will likely not be checking your CK. Thankfully, there is another sign that I see doctors miss all the time, and it drives me up a wall. So I'm telling you so that if you see it, you can bring it to your doctor's attention. So two enzymes, the AST and the ALT, are checked almost every time you have your full blood work done at either your rheumatologist or your primary care doctor's office. These are enzymes that can indicate the health of your liver and in fact are part of the liver function panel. However, they are also secreted by your muscles when they are inflamed. I can't tell you how often I've seen these two tests be ignored or explained by fatty liver when really they are coming from the muscles. So if you are having trouble doing things like combing or washing your hair or getting out of a chair without help, bring it up with your doctor. If you have lupus and have had persistently elevated AST or ALT and have been told it's just your liver, bring it up and ask if they are sure it isn't coming from your your muscles. The next clue lies in your skin. Rashes are very common in both lupus and MCT, but what we usually don't see in lupus is skin thickening. Skin thickening is more a feature of scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, and if we see this in someone with lupus, it should be a big sign that they have more than just lupus going on. The tightening is usually around the fingers and hands, but it can also extend to the forearm, the face, and chest in rare cases. Similar to those who have scleroderma, the skin changes in MCTD is due to fibrosis and not so much active inflammation. So if we are seeing this in the skin, we need to then start looking for fibrosis changes elsewhere, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more in a bit. And then finally, we have the RNP antibody. This may be listed in your blood work as the SM slash RNP or the U1 RNP antibody. It's actually very specific for MCTD and anyone with this antibody should be given a thorough check for any other clues for mixed connective tissue. It's often done as part of the usual ANA panel and is one of the few antibodies I see that when it's high, really makes me put my detective hat on as I suspect something is going on. Now that we know the key differences and clues that someone with lupus may actually have MCTD, what does this all matter? And it's a fair question because lupus and MCTD are similar enough that all the tools in my big trunk of immune system targeted medications usually work for both. This is why so many who have been told they have lupus but actually have MCTD are actually doing okay. So they aren't exactly starting back at square one, we can usually keep the same medications on board. But when we are dealing with MCTD, we have to keep alert for signs of fibrosis. The fibrosis we see in the skin can also happen in the lungs or the esophagus. And this also happens in those with scleroderma. These fibrotic changes don't respond well to that trunk of immune system targeted medications and they require a different strategy. But before even being able to implement that strategy, we have to know it's there. And to know it's there, we need to go looking for it. And to be looking for it, we need to know someone is at risk for it. And those with MCTD are at much higher risk for these fibrotic changes than someone with lupus. So you see, the change in the diagnosis helps both you and your doctor understand what game y'all are playing, which will then inform the complications you need to look out for. So what can you do to help clarify all of this? My recommendation is to never make any assumptions and always let your doctor know when you have or you think you have a new symptom. 
So many of the cases I've seen involved people just assuming new symptoms were part of lupus and they just had to deal with it. Also, remember that autoimmunity is not static. Things can change and it's not uncommon for diagnoses to change over time. What started out as lupus can morph or blossom into MCTD. This is not a consequence of your doctor missing something, but more a dynamic situation with the immune system. You know what they say about assumptions, and when it comes to your health, you really don't want to be an ass. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to learn more about Raynaud's, I recommend watching this video next. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hang in there, and I'll see you next time.